Hey, this is Matty Trump at MixAndMasterMySong.com. Today I want to go over um, why I sold my Slate Raven. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you might have noticed I used to have a big screen here, and this was up a little more. And I bought it for the idea that I wanted to be able to touch the music more. In other words, I wanted to be able to just grab for something and EQ it and stop you know, having to click around. Um, I feel that the less visual we can be with the music and the more we're focusing here instead of here, the better our mixes will be and the better the music we create will be. So that was my idea when I got my Raven was so I could touch the faders at two or three at a time and grab a plug-in. Um, and it works really well. And I, I love Slate products. This is no means a this video by Slate. But it didn't quite work for me because A, I still had a lot of screens, if not more screen time in front of me. And it didn't always quite work well. You had to line it up and it wouldn't always line up right. And then the faders were bigger and you couldn't really adjust a lot of the settings and Pro Tools. And then when I switched to Studio One, it worked even less where Studio One's already touch screen. So you didn't really need much of the, the processing power. Um, I found a lot of the shortcuts that you could use with the Batch Commander weren't all that helpful because you can actually do them with just using shortcut keys. But the bottom line is I wanted to touch things. So I sold my Slate and I picked up this, the Soft Tube um, Console One. And then the real reason when I kind of sold everything is I saw when the Fader Port 8 came out, I was like, that's gonna work great with Studio One, which is what I'm using now mostly to mix unless the client sends Pro Tools. Um, and so far it's been amazing uh, to be able to reach and grab things. And I'll just kind of really quick go over what I mean. Um, if I'm on this track here and I want to adjust the EQ, all I do is turn the knob and it opens up the plugin as you can see. And I'm, I'm adjusting the highs. I can set a shelf and it's, it's all me touching right here. And I don't, after you use this for a while, you don't really necessarily need to even look at the screen that much because you can see each knob. It's kind of hard to see from the, the, the way that camera is, but each knob has its own L LCD and you kind of know where you're at here. You know, you're at 4 dB and, and here you just kind of check. You'll have to look up usually and just for frequency range, but it also helps you actually listen to the frequency and not look at the screen so much. So what I'll do is I'm, if I'm trying to find where the meat of a sound is, is I just put a high Q and, and, and turn it up 10, 15 dB and just sweep through until I hear what I'm trying to hear. And then I can either turn it down or if I want to, to make it louder, uh, just keep the gain up or maybe bring it down to three or four dB or something like that. Um, it's also got a really cool transient designer built into it, which is cool to have just at the touch of a button. And then your low cut and your high cut uh, compressor and um, with Studio One, it's not working so well in Pro Tools. Um, but in Studio One, it also adjusts the actual volume of the fader, the pans. And uh, if you shift click, you can actually adjust the sends, the first three sends too with these knobs here. Um, and it's great because you just push any button you want and go to the track. And you'll see here if I'm on the 808, if I want to go to the kick top, it's number four. And you click kick top and it's number four on this. So it's been a really awesome way to get around and it's even got an auto mode so that as soon as I turn a knob, it turns on and I can see what's going on. Um, so that solved a, a big problem with the EQ and stuff. And then the fader port came out and it's allowed me to grab multiple faders at a time and bring them down. So if I want, if, if I click the snare drum, I can click this button here and it'll show me where my snare drum is right there. And then I can grab these and turn them down. And the cool thing about where I have it here is I can be looking at the screen or have the screen off even and and just turn the snares down. I don't have to like look at the thing. I just feel it. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm looking up and listening. And and that's what it's all about for me is, is to find a way to get less screen time and more listening time. Um, other great things it has is edit plugins, which uh, I don't know if I have any of them set up here on this mix. So here I got the Manny program. You got to program each plugin in, but after a while you start, you know, I just got this, so it's starting to program certain ones. The Manny one's already plugged in and you can you can look up here and adjust the different settings. And that's awesome. Just to, kind of like using this, but with other plugins you want, 
you can adjust the settings with these faders here so you can turn the gain up and down or the frequency up and down with this fader and that's the low and then the mid low mid uh, mids and then highs all in these faders and so you could turn the screen off and just look here and listen and that's what I do I have a hot key so I can move my mouse over to the corner and it'll turn the screen off and I can just listen and a lot of times when I'm doing the, the, the end of my mixes the final details I'm just listening with this and going through tracks scanning through whatever needs to be turned up a little bit or turned down a little bit and it's just another way to, to just vibe with the music more um, it also has pans which are cool and sends which are great too I'll use the sends if I'm mixing over here EQing I want a little more verb I can turn it up a little bit um, like on this vocal track, I have five different sends going. So I can turn each one up or down. And you can see on the screen, turning my, my dead dimension D up and down. And it's just so easy that way. Um, go back to track. And then you have all your automations. So I can just turn that on. If I want to, if I want to do an EQ delay, touch, and I'm on the way. And uh, so it's awesome. Uh, it's also got some other things like click and record. Um, I'll hit these buttons here. You can hit them both and it goes back to the beginning and then hit play. Um, it has tons of stuff and then uh, mute clear, solo clear, which I use quite a bit too. And there's a bunch of other stuff. There's tons of videos online that will kind of detail what's going on. My main focus for this video is just kind of why I picked this way instead of keeping my slate raven. And, um, so hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of my journey through trying to find something I can touch when mixing. Um, the Raven was really cool and, and I, I did dig it, but I still felt like I was using a mouse. If I wanted to touch a plugin, I could touch it, but there wasn't any difference from me scrolling with a mouse and touching it. Whereas on here, I can turn the low gain and the high at the same time, right? And then compress it over here uh, change the ratio and the threshold while I'm still boosting the low end. You know what I mean? I can get right into the thing. And the other thing that's great about the soft tooth thing has helped me is I use less plugins. I put this on every channel and then I just mix. And as if I need to change something or if there's a sound I want, I have all my other plugins to do that with. But this thing has been kind of my main plugin now. And um, the other stuff's just colors or, or different sounds that I might need throughout the mix. So hopefully that helps you guys if you're um, trying to decide whether you should get one of these or one of these or the Raven or whatnot. And, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below and make sure to subscribe. Have a good day. Thanks.